Hey, Zane Griggs here. Did you know that the ratio of the bacteria living in your gut can actually determine how much energy you store from your food? So basically how, much, uh, how many calories you take in from the food that you eat and actually hold on to, like store as fat and, and, and hang on to for, for energy storage. Uh, and it can also affect the you know, gene expression of several diseases like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, uh, so they even cancer. Uh, so these, this ratio is pretty, is pretty important. Uh, but especially with weight control, it appears, um, there's two primary types of bacteria living in our gut that make, they make up about, the two of them together make up about 90% of the bacteria living in our digestive system. Uh, one's called the Firmicutes, and the other's called the Bacterioidetes. Now, rather than try to remember that, let's just call them Freddies and Bobbies. Okay, so it's our Freddie to Bobby ratio, or the FB ratio that they look at. That is actually a, an obesity biomarker. So if they look at this and they see, okay, this is your FB ratio, they can look at that and determine your propensity, your risk uh, for obesity. So it's that important. They've been studying this for a long time. It's, it's part of like the epigenetics thing that's going on where they look at you know, how these bacteria affect our genes and how they affect gene expression. So if you have more, they actually did a study, Harvard did a study in 2010, so that's like seven years ago. I mean, that's a long time ago. Uh, they've been looking at this for a while. So the Firmicutes or the Freddies uh, tend to be in a higher, a higher number, a higher amount of uh, Freddies tend to be in people who are overweight, diabetic, uh, or obese, whereas people who tend to be leaner are actually have more of the bobbies. And actually, the study was they compared the, uh, the FB ratios by looking at, at stool samples of the children uh, living in rural Africa, okay, versus uh, kids living in Western Europe, okay, so have more of a Western diet, kind of like similar to ours, a lot more starch available, uh, a lot more sugar starch, fruit available all the time, whereas the, the, the children living in rural Africa had ate a lot more uh, fibrous veggies, non-starchy vegetable fiber, but vegetable matter. So it wasn't about whether they ate meat, it wasn't whether they ate bread, but they tend to have more vegetable fiber versus starchier plant material. And of course, the kids in rural Africa had it twice as many Fred, uh, bobbies as Freddy's, and the kids living in Western Europe who had the starchier diet had twice as many Bo um, Freddy's as Bobby's. So it's that FB ratio when you have twice as many Firmicutes as Bacterioides, you tend to be obese and overweight. The opposite is true. We have more uh, Bacterioides and fewer Firmicutes. Uh, you're you're going to be leaner. You're absorbing less fuel and you're not hanging on to as much fuel. You actually have more energy. So it allows you to actually not only, uh, you, you're going to absorb less calories, but you're going to burn more calories. You're going to have more, it affects energy levels as well. So it's pretty crazy. So obviously, you know, it, it, it kind of ties back to what I've been uh, talking about with eating more veggies, putting more vegetables in your diet, more fibrous veggies, avoiding the starches, uh, which, can, which creates a low carb diet because you have fewer actual calories coming in from those types of um, vegetables. Okay, so you want, so really two thirds, three quarters of your plate, especially lunches and dinners, should be made up of these fibrous veggies, salads, steamed veggies, sauteed veggies, stuff like that. So, uh, and that's basically how we can change, that ratio can start changing in a matter of hours or, or days. So you can really start changing your FB ratio pretty quickly. It doesn't take months or years. You just start reducing the sugar and starch that you eat and adding more fibrous veggies like the asparagus, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, that kind of stuff. Lots of leafy green vegetables, leafy green stuff in your salads. Uh, having more low sugar fruits like uh, zucchini, bell peppers, tomatoes, rather than the super sugary fruits, you know, like uh, pineapple and grapes and that kind of stuff. Uh, so shift your diet to more slow burning, slower burning carbohydrates with more vegetable fiber. Stay away from the grains, especially heavily gluten grains, because those spike blood sugar and tend to feed the, the starch in the, in the grains tend to feed um, the, the Freddies, so uh, reducing that kind of that kind of starch, you know, and I'm not talking about veggies like, you know, like corn and peas, okay, potatoes, those are starchy, okay, they're not the fibrous kind. So go over that that really fiber fiber filled low starch veggies, uh, fill your plate with those, really reduce the starchy kind, reduce the grains to a minimal amount, and you'll start and you'll start having that 
that FB ratio shift in the direction that you want, which means you're absorbing less calories from the food that you eat, you're, you have more energy, and you're reducing your biomarkers and the gene expression for those uh, terrible, um, you know, uh, basic lifestyle diseases that we're all been suffering for and that have been on the increase for the last 50 years. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to post them below. I'm happy to answer them. And if you know someone that could benefit from hearing this because they just haven't, they just don't realize how their food is affecting their their bacteria population in their gut and how that affects the you know the, the, the degree that that affects their health and their weight, uh, please tag them in the comments below because they may really appreciate you letting them know about this information. Talk to you later.